Hi, everybody. I'm Professor Sackett Taylor, and welcome to Westfield State University's Principles of Microeconomics this summer. I wanted to give you a rundown of the course syllabus and explain things in my own words. That way, if you have more questions, you can reach out to me directly um, after reviewing the syllabus together. So in this course, we're going to be looking through a microeconomic lens. That means the individual as a consumer or a firm. And my goal here is really to help you use the theoretical models that come from the textbook content to analyze both historical and contemporary events. And really, my primary purpose is to help you get to a point where you can easily identify applications and examples of these economic concepts in your day-to-day -day life. So to do that, I will be using the following textbook. It's called Principles of Microeconomics. It's the fourth edition of this textbook by Dirk Mateer and Lee Kopik. Um, you'll need to purchase access to the digital resources associated with this textbook, and there are detailed uh, instructions on how to do that in our Plato course page. The bundle that you'll be purchasing, which includes the ebook, inquisitive, and smart work, will cost you $84.95. In this course, uh, we will be covering roughly 12 uh, chapters of content over the course of six weeks. So it is a fast paced course. We'll be covering two to three chapters of content per week. And I've given you an outline here of how the, the course progresses through the textbook chapters. You'll see that the final week is a project week and there'll be more coming on that in just a second. So the course is formatted um, so that you're doing the same thing every week with the same deadlines. So I do this so that there's no confusion about when things are due or what you're supposed to be doing. The only thing that changes week to week is the specific content. So every week you'll be assigned chapters to read from the textbook. The deadline to read these chapters will be each Friday. You'll want to watch the videos and interact with any graphs that are in the ebook to break up the text. I suggest giving yourself one to two hours per chapter and that you're taking written notes or creating flashcards as you read, which will really help you with retaining the information. In order to get full credit for reading the chapters in the textbook, you'll need to answer each of the check for understanding questions that are embedded in the reading. And you'll see that they're actually tracked on the sidebar for you so that you'll know if you've missed one that you can go back and answer it before you submit. The second thing you'll do each week is you'll submit a one-page StoryCorps archive reflection. So StoryCorps is um, a project that was initiated by National Public Radio where individuals can record conversations about a number of different topics, anything that really is important to them. And the conversations are then archived in the Library of Congress. And so you're going to be searching the StoryCorps archive each week for keywords um, related to the assigned chapter content. And I've provided you with some suggested keywords. Then you're going to get to select a story from the archive that you want to listen to. And then you'll submit a reflection by the assignment deadline, which will again be each Friday, that meets the word count. So I'm looking for a approximately 500 words, not too many more, not too many less. This is one page of writing and it needs to pass the safe assign test. So this is a detection tool that will detect the use of AI or other forms of plagiarism. Um, as long as you meet the word count and it passes the safe assign test, you'll receive full credit for your reflection. Finally, to make sure that you're checking that you've understood the concepts and you're ready to move on to the next chapter, you're going to take a short reading quiz that's called an inquisitive assignment. The deadline for each of these assignments is the Monday following the Friday. So this is actually a gamified quiz uh, program. So you'll get to make a wager on each question based on your confidence level. So if you're more confident, you can make the question worth more points. If you're less confident, you can make the question worth with fewer points, and then you'll answer as many questions as you want until you reach your point goal. You can even save and return later so you don't have to do it all in one sitting. As long as you reach 85% of your point goal by the assignment deadline, you'll receive full credit for this assignment. 
So you'll probably notice that I'm using a non-traditional way of grading assignments. I won't be subjectively grading any of your written reflections or your answers to the quizzes. Each assignment has its own set of grading criteria, which align with my learning objectives in this course. And you'll see that I have rubrics available in our Play-Doh course shell with more details about those grading criteria. But basically on each assignment, if you meet all of the assignment criteria, um, you'll receive a, che a green check mark in Play-Doh, and that means that you've gotten full credit for that assignment. If you've turned in the assignment by the deadline, but it does not meet all of the criteria, it'll be returned to you with some feedback from me and an opportunity to resubmit the assignment. Assignments that are not turned in by the deadline receive a red X in the Play-Doh gradebook um, and do not receive credit. So how do you receive a final course grade if each individual thing doesn't get a grade? Well, I've designed this assessment structure to really put you in control of the final course grade that you earn in this class. The goal here is to help you focus on the learning rather on the pressure of getting a specific grade. So the first week of class, you'll choose the grade that you want to earn this semester. And then you'll see that you can earn that grade by simply getting enough green check marks on the assignments associated with that learning goal. So for each cha chapter reading, you'll need to um, complete 100% of the check for understanding questions in order to get that green check mark. For the inquisitive reading quizzes, you'll need to earn 85% or higher on your point goal with the unlimited attempts in order to earn the green check mark. And with your Storyport archive weekly reflections, you just need to meet the word count and pass the safe assign test to get the green check mark. Now, if your learning goal is to earn a grade of a B plus, then you need to complete 10 out of 12 chapter readings, 10 out of 12 reading quizzes, and four out of five weekly reflections. To earn a grade of a C plus, you only need to complete eight out of 12 chapter readings, eight out of 12 reading quizzes, and three out of five weekly reflections. Everyone will need to submit the final semester project for grading, which includes an annotated bibliography and the recording of your own StoryCorps conversation, which you'll see a lot more details about in our Play-Doh course page. So here you'll see that I've only created two learning goals, a goal of a B plus or a, a goal of a C plus. In order to get the grades in between those two things, you need to do addendum assignments. So to get an A, you need to meet the requirements for learning goal one and, com and complete and submit two addendum credits. To get an A minus, you meet learning goal one and submit one addendum credit. To get a B, you need to meet learning goal two and submit two addendum credits. To get a B minus, you need to meet learning goal two and submit one addendum credit. So what are these addendum credits? Well, the addendum credits are associated with some enhancement activities and each activity is worth one addendum credit. The addendum assignments can be submitted at any time throughout the semester, but the deadline to receive credit for them is the last day of the summer semester. There are two options to earn addendum credits. The first, you can find a recent news article or podcast episode related to an economic topic that's covered in this course. Submit a one page, 500 words or less reflection on the economic themes and how they may impact your life or the lives of others. I ask that you include the title, author, date published, and web link to the source of your reflection. Your second option is to watch one of the films that I've listed here that has economic themes in it. You'll submit a one-page, 500 word or less reflection on the economic themes in the film and how they impact your life or the lives of others. Again, I ask that you include title, author, or in this case, director, the date that it was released, and a web link to the source. Um, most of these videos can be found on one of the streaming services, whether it be Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon Prime. The final project is to engage in a personal story core conversation with someone that you care about. StoryCorps is committed to the idea that everyone has an important story to tell and that everyone's story matters. Their mission is to illuminate the possibility in all of us one story at a time. 
So over 700,000 people have had and recorded meaningful conversations about their lives, which are now housed in the U.S. Library of Congress. It's one of the largest single collection of human voices ever gathered throughout human history. So this semester, you will identify an economic topic from the course content and record a conversation with a friend or family member about your personal lived experience as it relates to that topic. You'll see that there are more detailed instructions in our Plato course page, but essentially it's a three-step process. First, you'll engage in some independent research on the economic topic, and you'll create an annotated bibliography of at least three different sources that will be used to inform your conversation. Second, you'll draft a set of guiding questions or topics that will form the foundation of your conversation. And then finally, you'll sit down and have the conversation with a friend or a family member and record it using the StoryCorps app on your smartphone or using StoryCorps Connect from your web browser. To receive full credit for this assignment, you'll share your, the web URL link to your archive recording with me. This semester, I am here to support you. For questions about course content or other concerns about the course, the best way to reach me is directly by email here. And I wanna note that my email does have three consecutive T's in it. So in your email, it really helps if you can include a descriptive subject line, your full name, and the specific question that you'd like a response to. In order to succeed by, in this course, I really have three pieces of, of advice. One, the lessons and the assignments are organized sequentially by week, and the sequence is important and designed to make the material easier to follow. So if you, can, if you complete the weekly assignments as scheduled, it's really the best way to stay in sync with the course. But if you know that you're going to be busy or you have something else planned for a specific day, plan ahead to spend extra time on the readings and assignments on the other days. Always follow the instructions on each assignment carefully, and when in doubt, send me an email asking for clarification before you submit something for grading. And finally, the deadlines are there to help you. All of the assignments do have hard deadlines as indicated in the course outline. So try to plan your week accordingly. Readings and reflections are always due on Fridays, and quizzes are always due on Mondays. But if you're unable to complete an assignment by the, by the published deadline, just submit it when you can. Let me know that you need the extension so I can reopen the assignment for you. All assignments that are submitted by the last day of the summer semester will be considered for evaluation. So that's everything in our course syllabus. Now you'll wanna go back into start here in our Plato course page and complete the other tasks that I've assigned you before you jump into the content. I wish you the best of luck this summer semester. And remember, I'm here to support you. So please reach out if you need any help.